And that right there was laser cleaning. If you guys want to know more information about this cleaning process, leave a comment down below and possibly in the near future, if there is enough interest, I might just share a couple more videos. With that said, today's video will be all about the three cylinder Yanmar diesel engine, which came out of the John Deere 855 compact tractor. Before I rebuild any engine, I always try and figure out why the engine failed in the first place. This tractor specifically only had 1400 hours on the clock and that's really nothing. Today I'll take you through my troubleshooting process of all the parts laid out on this table and hopefully I can figure out the issue. If you guys have any questions or thoughts don't forget to leave them down in the comment section below. You might be able to identify the cause of failure of this engine yourself. Laid out on this table we have various components from the three-cylinder Yanmar diesel engine. Off to the left we have our air intake which is our air filter specifically. We have the air filter right here and our air filter box. Going to the engine, we will also have a couple of hoses and that will make up our air intake. Further on to the right, we have our cylinder head. This has been cleaned up and also laser cleaned so the surface is perfectly flat, just like it came out of the factory. All the carbon buildup has been removed and as you guys can see, it is very clean. Below the cylinder head, you will also notice a thermostat. This is a vital point in our cooling system and I will talk about this later on but the thermostat will indicate our cooling for our engine. Further on to the right, which is in the middle of the table, we have three connecting rods, three wrist pins, and three pistons above. The pistons off to the right have been cleaned with the laser cleaner, and the one on the very left has been partially cleaned, as you guys will see. It has been cleaned exactly in half, and this is perfectly clean off to the right, but on the left you will also notice this is the original condition of the piston. A lot of carbon buildup above the top ring and within those grooves for the piston rings we also have a lot of carbon buildup and along the wall of the piston we also have a little bit of discoloration. So I'm going to talk about this later on a little bit and about the sizes and what I noticed but we'll move on to the other parts laid out on this table. Off to the right we also have our oil pump. I took this apart to give you guys a better understanding of the oil pump later on in this video. Uh, our oil pump will also make up our lubrication for our engine. Now to the far right, we also have the engine block. Like I mentioned before, this is a three cylinder and that's why we also have three cylinders in this block. I'm gonna talk more about this later on and I'll also shine a light in here so we can check out the cylinder walls. I shared with you guys an overview of all the parts on this table and hopefully I was able to spread everything out so you guys will have a better view later on in this video. But right now I'm going to start with the cylinder head. I'm going to share with you guys what I noticed, what's good and or what's bad. The cylinder head is laid out so we can see the machined surface where it will lie on our engine block. In between the cylinder head and our engine block, we also have a head gasket. You'll also see some indications of the head gasket and you will see a little pattern around the head. Um, we also see three intake ports and three exhaust ports. The smaller ones are always exhaust, the bigger ones are always the intake. Um, we also have our valve seats which are pushed into the cylinder head. And I'm going to focus on this side of the head first. Um, the other side is also very important, even the sides where our intake or our exhaust is. But I'm really going to focus on this side, this makes most sense. And I'm really going to focus on the valves themselves but also the surface and the indentations that we can see on the head. Our exhaust ports and our exhaust valve seats are actually in fairly good condition. Uh, usually there's a bunch of carbon buildup and the carbon tends to block the valve on the seat and the valve cannot be seated properly. But in our case, everything on the exhaust seems very healthy and for 1400 hours, um, there's not much damage. Usually exhaust ports also have the tendency to uh, have damaged surfaces over time because the carbon just eats away the valve seat itself, but there's not much to see, but everything is in good condition. Now when we go to the intake ports and our intake valve seats, um, there's a little difference uh, on number three, number two, and number one. Everything seems to be good. But there's a couple indentations just like this one right here. There's a little indentation in the valve seat. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, so something came into the engine and especially in number two also something came into the engine because I can see 
a little bit of damage even on the surface of the cylinder head. There's a little bit of damage right there, right there, and right there. So I believe something fell into this cylinder specifically, but overall, there's not much damage on all three. Now for the surface of the cylinder head, you will also notice the surface is very smooth. There's no damage even from the coolant. Usually when our head gasket is up on our cylinder head, we will also have a little bit of damage or corrosion from our coolant, which was in the block or in our system. And the ports or the openings for our coolant were right here and there's not much corrosion. So that means uh, the head gasket was doing its job and there's not even much damage to the head itself. I talked about the machine surface on this cylinder head. I looked at the surface itself. I looked at the intake and the exhaust ports and also the valve seats. Everything seems to be very healthy. In the middle cylinder, we also have a little bit of damage to the surface right where the piston will come up on, but there's nothing too drastic and nothing I really have to address. I will give this cylinder head to the machine shop so they can check it for cracks. I cannot do that here in my shop. I just don't have those tools. So I will be doing that. And right now I'll move on to the oil pump. On the screen, I have the oil pump assembly. You will also notice we have an aluminum piece, which is our top cover for the oil pump assembly. We have our main housing. This is cast iron. We have two locating pins for both halves of the housing. On the inside, we have our inner rotor of the oil pump. We have the outer rotor, which I already removed. Uh, we have one shaft. This goes all the way through the housing to our drive gear. This right here is our drive gear. And the drive gear is connected to our inner rotor by a pin. That pin is right there. So now what I wanna look for when I'm looking at an oil pump, I wanna make sure everything spins freely and that there's nothing seized up, obviously. I wanna check the drive gear and make sure it's in good condition. And this looks, in my opinion, like it's brand new. Um, so with that said, everything over here is good. It must spin freely and it must look visually very good. Now, the next thing to look at is the inner rotor. The inner rotor has very light wear. This is basically nothing. Um, so this is like new. And another thing that you also wanna check is from your drive gear to your inner rotor that you do not have any play. There should not be any play in between here. If there would be any play, that means your inner rotor, the bore of your inner rotor is too large and there is wear or the pin inside has already been uh, damaged and you would have to address that with a larger pin or modify something in this assembly. So looking at this, the inner rotor is in great condition and everything is solid. Even the housing looks to be in good condition around the perimeter of the outer rotor. Everything is very healthy here. Next up, I'll look at the outer rotor. It's very important to address the outside perimeter and you will notice there is basically no damage on this whatsoever. It was always in oil. Obviously, if you don't have any oil in our system, you would also have damage anywhere on the inside or on the outside. Now on the inside, you will see there is a little bit of oil residue right now, but the inside looks just as good as the outside of the inner rotor. So I'm very happy with the quality of the outer and the inner rotor, and I cannot see any significant damage on this assembly. Now to the second part of the housing, which is the top half. This is aluminum, like I mentioned before. You wanna make sure that there's not much damage here. Um, this surface has to be perfectly flat, especially where our inner and outer rotor will drive. That's in this area. And you'll also see a couple shiny spots, but when I go over it by hand, there's basically no damage. So I'm not too worried about this oil pump and I can assume that the oil pump on this engine was working just fine. So I talked about the details on the oil pump specifically, and that's also the lubrication for this engine. Uh, if everything was good on the oil pump, I can assume everything was good on the lubrication side of things. Now I'm gonna focus on the pistons, wrist pins, and connecting rods. Everything is in one picture, the pistons, the wrist pins, and the connecting rods. I will start with the pistons and work my way down. Um, since I did not take this engine apart, I was not able to identify which piston or connecting rod came from where. So I focused on the middle one since it has imperfections on the top or the face of the piston. 
Now you guys will see something is embedded in the top and there's also some pinholes around the perimeter as well. Um, this pinhole or this embedded piece is also visible on the cylinder head which I reviewed before. So this must have been the middle piston and off to the left and off to the right this could either be number one or number three or vice versa. So number two which is the middle piston has the particles on the top and around the perimeter it is very healthy. Sure after a couple hours of runtime there are also a couple imperfections around the perimeter above our top piston ring. Um, there are a couple imperfections but as you guys can see nothing drastic. Um, there's not even very bad scoring along the piston wall. Um, so the, the, even, even, the, even the machine marks on the piston are still visible. And even in the grooves of our pistons, we do not have any damage. So it's basically only something that was on top of the piston. Maybe something did enter the engine. Um, it did get embedded into the top of this piston. But whatever was in there actually went back out. So number two is okay, I suppose. And number one and number three, so that one right there and this one um, were also cleaned. This one was cleaned with the laser and that one was partially cleaned. Um, when we look at it, the top of the piston is okay. There's not much damage right there. And when we look around the perimeter, there's still the machine marks around the whole perimeter and there's little to no damage whatsoever. Uh, maybe I did that little mark right there, but other than that, there's really no damage on these pistons, so I'm really happy with the piston quality, but those pistons, I believe, are still good. Um, this is the original piston, and this is how I cleaned out the grooves with the laser, but as you guys will see above, this is the carbon buildup, and even with that carbon buildup, it is still very healthy, so um, I don't think there was much uh, wrong with the pistons. Sure, something came into cylinder number two, because there is something embedded on the face of the piston. But now I'll work my way down because I didn't see much wrong with the piston and I will move on to the wrist pins. I did measure these beforehand and what I did notice that there is a little bit of wear on the inside. So th these two outer points of the wrist pin will be in our piston and the inner surface will be riding on our top bearing of the connecting rod. Now this surface is just a shade undersized and obviously it's hard to see that visually. This will have to be measured and obviously checked with our service manual. But now when we look at the connecting rod, you will notice that the top bearing for the wrist pin has slight wear and slight wear is towards the bottom of the bearing and the top. There's not much horizontally, so closer to this end and this end, it is really just vertically. So what happens when this connecting rod goes upward to the top dead center, our wrist pin will be pushed down. Even though there is an oil film between the wrist pin and the bearing, um, there is obviously more pressure towards the bottom. So as it goes up, it'll push on the bottom end of the bearing. And then when it explodes on the top and comes down, it'll also have more pressure on the top. And this is an indication of where towards the bottom and on the top of this bearing. So this will obviously have to be replaced as well as those wrist pins because this could cause serious damage um, to our cylinder wall in our engine block. When we look at the connecting rod a little bit further, everything is still in great condition. The surfaces on the connecting rods are still in great condition. So I'm talking about these surfaces. Um, they are still machined to perfection and they are very healthy. There's not much wear on them. But as we come down to the bottom, our bearings on our crankshaft look a little bit different. We can also see wear towards the bottom and the top of the connecting rod. And there's also there are also a couple of imperfections in this bearing. I wouldn't say it's anything bad. Um, I did measure these beforehand and they're still in the range of being good, but visually I would replace them. And obviously if I rebuild this engine, I will replace them. You guys will notice there is a little bit of damage or something that it took in the bearing right there, a little, a little piece of metal, but there's nothing too drastic. And especially on the crankshaft itself, um, there's no sign of any wear on the crankshaft, um, just on the bearings over here on the connecting rod. 
This right here was a visual inspection on the pistons, the wrist pins, and the connecting rods, especially the two bearings, the top and on the bottom. If you guys do this at home, you'll also be able to identify any issues on the top or on the bottom of your engine. I covered more than half of the components on this table. Uh, we had a good look at the pistons. In the middle piston, there was a little bit of damage on the face of the piston, but where it rides on the cylinder walls, um, which is the piston skirt or the piston wall, um, it actually looks very healthy throughout the whole engine. So the oil pump, the cylinders, and even the head are somewhat good. But now I'll move on to the cooling part, which is the thermostat. And I'll also share with you guys what I found around the radiator. And I'll also talk about the air intake or the air filter side of things. But we'll have to talk about that on the engine block because here we have the most damage throughout our whole engine. It might just be because of too much heat. So that would be the cooling side of things and also a little bit of the air. So let's have a look at the engine block right now. And I picked up this John Deere A55 from the John Deere dealer. One of the mechanics over there gave me a little hint um, what could have happened to this engine. And they stated this engine had been dusted. And uh, that's a slang term, I suppose. But what dusted actually means is abrasion to the cylinder walls within your engine block. So you may ask yourself, what is abrasion to a cylinder wall? And it's very straightforward. We have an air intake system on our engine and we also have an air filter, which is this right here. Um, along our air intake system, we might have a couple elbows, we might have a couple pipes and everything is put together with different components. Now at the very end of that air intake system, we have this air filter and hopefully we can filter out the pollutants within our air that come into the engine. If the air filter does not do a good job, if it's clogged or if it's very old, particles can make their way into our engine but also along the air intake system, which is made up of different components on every seam, we can have air coming in and also catching pollutants throughout the air and also making its way into the engine. Once that air comes into the engine with all those pollutants, it will act as an abrasive within our cylinders. Now, sure, some of that can go out the exhaust again, but most of that happens to catch on the oil inside of our cylinders and create an abrasive film. So what happens since this block is cast and our pistons are aluminum, the oil film that holds those abrasives or those pollutants in will rub up against our piston and create a bond. And what will form is like a lapping process. Now, as that piston goes up and down with that abrasive material around it within the oil, it will just wear out our cylinder walls in the diameter. So I explained the abrasion process within the cylinders and I'm not too sold on the being dusted of this engine. Uh, that's what the mechanic told me uh, this engine suffered from, but there is one indication that this engine was not dusted. Um, so now our engine right here is cast and our pistons are aluminum. Now, when we have pollutant that comes into our cylinders and it mixes with the oil, um, our pistons pick that up. And since these are aluminum, this is softer material, the pollutants or the debris will pick up on the pistons themselves and it will cause the piston to go up and down and it will cause scoring on the outside perimeter of this piston. And when we looked at the pistons beforehand, these pistons were not scored whatsoever. Sure, there might just be one little score here or there, but there's really nothing else on this piston. So uh, that leads me to another topic, which might be heat. When I talk about heat, I'm not just talking about the thermostat, which is in the water pump. I'm talking about debris, which will collect around the radiator so the engine cannot cool down. This right here was all removed from around the radiator. We also have an oil cooler, which is for our transmission or our hydraulic oil. But this debris was in that area. I picked everything out, as you guys saw in my previous video. And this will drastically minimize the cooling effect on our Yanmar three-cylinder diesel engine. That was all the debris that piled up around the oil core and the radiator, and I didn't even clean out the radiator yet. So that must have minimized the cooling effect for this engine. But there's also another topic we have to talk about in the cooling system, which is the thermostat. Talking about the thermostat, this is a very important piece in our cooling system. Um, this lies within our water pump. And for this John Deere three-cylinder engine, which is a Yanmar diesel engine, and um, we have two settings for a thermostat. So what is actually the thermostat? It is basically a valve within our coolant system. What this allows the engine to do is to operate at a certain temperature. It also gives the engine a certain amount of time to warm up to reach that temperature. 
then it'll open up because there is a spring on this thermostat, like I mentioned before, a valve. That valve will open and let coolant to pass through and cool, but also regulate that coolant to a certain level so this engine will always run at the right temperature. So you guys know what I removed around the radiator and I also shared with you guys the thermostat. John Deere has two settings for a thermostat for this engine, which is 66 degrees Celsius and around 81 degrees Celsius. I'll share the Fahrenheit down below. And also this thermostat was tested prior to this video and it opened up at around 90 degrees Celsius. So what that means, this engine would be running constantly at 10 degrees over the temperature limit. And it might be that this thermostat is old, the spring is weak or who knows what. So in the near future, I will have to look at this thermostat again, but I will also make sure that I buy a brand new thermostat and maybe I will even buy the colder temperature thermostat to run this engine. So right now I'm gonna share with you guys all three cylinder walls. I'll also speak about the thermal issue on this engine and why I think it was a thermal issue because we saw the radiator debris and also had a good look at the thermostat and it might have just been running a little bit too high. So let's have a look at the cylinder block. I have a flashlight and my pick to share with you guys each bore of the cylinder block. Now we're gonna have a flashlight on and I'm gonna share with you guys the inside. You will notice there is no scoring along the cylinder wall on either of the bores. You'll notice a little ridge on the top. The top ridge is our step, so there is wear on this side. And the second step or the second line that you will notice right there is from the top piston ring. Now onto the very right, you will also notice the exact same thing. Uh, the cylinder walls actually look very healthy. Towards the bottom, it is smaller. And towards the top, close to that very top ring, we have a little step. So you guys will hear that right here. There's a step right there, right there, and right there as well. So what that means is the top of the bore is larger than the bottom. We have wear towards the top and the last half inch of this bore. So from this point on to the very top of the machine surface, um, the bore is smaller again because there is no piston ring in this area. When I give you guys a close up view on the top, you will also notice the cross hatch still exists along the cylinder wall. I reviewed all three cylinder bores. There was wear towards the top. Uh, the bore is a little bit bigger. I didn't measure it yet, but I think it's out of spec and that's why it has to be rebuilt. Um, according to the John Deere mechanic, I do not believe it was dusted because there are no score marks going up or down and there is no scoring on the pistons either. So that leads me to think that this engine had a failure according to temperature. Now, obviously thermal is a little bit different. It's very hard to diagnose that, especially since I did not take this all apart. The radiator was very clogged. The thermostat for some reason opens up 10 degree too hot than spec. So that would be opening around 90, maybe even 92. So if it's fully open, let's say at 95, that means it's still running too hot. Um, if that's the case, the oil would get thinner within our engine. That means it's not able to lubricate properly. If somebody had thinner oil within this engine, especially for winter use, let's say, that means the film between our pistons, piston rings and cylinder walls is not sufficient to create a lubricant within our engine. That means everything is running too hot there is abrasion between the piston rings, pistons, and cylinder walls. This leads me to think this engine was running too hot or even overheating without the operator knowing that. Um, that could be because of the sensor, that could be because of the thermostat, or that could just be because of a plugged radiator. And all those things combined could make your engine run hot. Obviously this engine didn't blow up, it was still running, but it wasn't running good. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take this apart I might have even found the issue beforehand before even removing it. But in this case, I really think it's because of a thermal issue, just the engine running too hot. For some reason, the pistons even look good. I'm gonna have to measure them and see if they're within spec. Even if they would be within spec, I'm not going to reuse them because they might even have thermal damage and they could be weak on the material side of things. I really hope I was able to give you guys a full walkthrough on how I diagnose an engine failure. And if you guys learned something today, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. And if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to leave your thoughts down below, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts 
on this issue. And if you guys ran into something similar, let me know down below as well. If you guys are interested in an upcoming rebuild video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because I will receive a rebuild kit on this engine very soon. I will have to send it to the machine shop. It'll be back and then hopefully I can rebuild it. So stick around for an upcoming video on this Yanmar 3-cylinder diesel engine.